Enemy Mine was released in 1985. It was given a huge budget of $40 million. It had originally been greenlit with a smaller budget, but due to production issues and change of director halfway through, the costs escalated. 20th Century Fox spent a fortune advertising it upon release, but the film failed to grab the public's attention, many claiming down to the way it was advertised. The film started out with the director Richard Longrain, who went on to direct Richard III and Firewall. The production started out in Iceland. The film began shooting in April 1984. However, after weeks of shooting in Iceland and Budapest, producers became concerned about a mixture of budget overruns, creative differences and poor quality dailies. Filming was stopped. The studio had already spent nine million in production costs and had pay or play contracts committing an additional 18 million. So the executives needed to decide whether to cut their losses or go with a new director. At the same time, Fox changed its upper management and new chairman Barry Diller and head of production Lawrence Gordon decided to move ahead with a new director. The studio had faith in the story and actors involved and hired Wolfgang Peterson to take over as director. Peterson did not like any of Long Crane's work and opted to start anew, scouting locations alongside the African coast. Stars Dennis Quaid and Lewis Gossett Jr. remained on doing the duration of the film's delays and were paid holding money. He moved the production from Budapest to Munich at the studio he used for Das Boot. Originally, Enemy Mine was based on a novel with the same name by Barry Longyear. The story tells of an encounter between a human and an alien soldier whose races are in a state of war. They are marooned together in space and have to come to grips with the universal problem of facing and accepting xenophobia. During their time of trying to get along, the alien Drac, who is early on to be revealed as asexual, so there are no male or female Dracs, finds out he is pregnant, much to Dennis Quaid's amusement. There is a problem doing birth and the Drac passes away. Davidge is left to raise the baby Drac Zamis by himself. But things take a turn for the worse when some cruel human scavengers arrive and set up a, an illegal mine on the planet using captured Drax as slave miners. In the original story, there is no mention of mining on the planet. It was thrown in by the studio executives so the audience wouldn't get confused because from the title you would expect some mining to be taking place. So the end does seem a bit tagged on to throw in the plot element of Zamis getting kidnapped by the illegal miners. The president of Fox's marketing department felt the film was an extremely difficult movie to market that it's the story of two species evolving from enemies to friends made the science fiction picture less about the technology used in the film and more along the lines of brotherhood. With Enemy Mine costing over 40 million, the studio hoped for a large first weekend opening. That did not occur, with the film pulling in only 1.6 million at 703 theatres nationwide. As of Christmas Day, the film had only taken 2.3 at the box office, so the film completely bombed. The best part of the film is the exploration of Quaid's and Gossett's relationship how they initially hate and distrust one another but gradually become to appreciate and understand each other. The makeup used to transform Gossett into the lizard-like alien is very skillfully done. Later when Gossett's character dies and his baby son takes his place, the bond between human and the young alien becomes generally touching. The opening spaceship battle was very well staged by ILM, who handled the effects on the film and previously had done Star Wars. To be honest, this is probably one of the few films from the 80s that the effects still stand up very well today. It has some of the best map paintings I've seen from the old method of optical printing. The scenes where Davidge is reunited with his fellow humans after years stranded on the unfamiliar planet are done too hurriedly and make little impact on the story. The film's climax in which Davidge tries to rescue his young drac friend from the scavengers has flashes of excitement, but is another scene that seems to be put together in great haste. The ending feels really sudden and underdeveloped. Dennis Quaid is a very good actor and has a great range if you watch some of his later films, such as Inner Space and Far From Heaven, which are completely different movies. There are some very funny moments in the film from Dennis Quaid, as you can see here. Shit. Shit. What do you mean, shit? No, solid. Solid, I'll show you. Huh? <laughs> Not solid. You know, while you're having such a good time and doing nothing, I am trying to think of ways to improve our situation. Okay. You know the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Dawis, you learned this from great drag teacher Chisma. 
No, from Mickey Mouse. A who? Mickey Mouse. Your Mickey Mouse is one big stupid dump. I'm sorry that we you live like animals, and you get so fat you can barely move. Oh my god. Oh my god, are you telling me you're pregnant? What, you're gonna have a, a, a baby? Well, a little drag? <laughs> Furthermore, Lewis Gossett Jr. gives the performance of his career. It's a shame he didn't get any nominations at the time. According to the actor, the Drac language was created from scratch. Much of it is actually Russian, pronounced in reverse, and often does the Drac voice at convention appearances. I came across this film a few years back when I was searching for random sci-fi films from the 80s. After the success of Star Wars, many studios were trying to capitalise on the genre, and unfortunately many failed, and Enemy Mine was one of them. I think younger audiences were expecting something more action-packed. Older audiences would have enjoyed the subject matter the film deals with. I watched the film a number of times, and love the humour it has from Dennis Quaid, and the special effects really do impress. The music score really stands on its own, and has a John Williams feel to it, with more electronic percussion thrown in. The movie kind of feels like an old 50s sci-fi film that has been modernised for a new audience. The original theatrical trailer for the film really conveys what the film is about. Maybe many people didn't want that from a science fiction movie, and had already judged it before seeing it. The first three acts are very solid, it's just the ending that feels very rushed and is not completely satisfying. It would be interesting one day if 20th Century Fox do a special edition on the film where we get to see the incompleted version by Richard Longcrane to see what he shot and how bad it looked because I'm sure it's sitting away in their vault somewhere. I highly recommend checking this film out. It has a lot of heart and deals with prejudice and tolerance in a very smart way.